Today, I have a Westinghouse. She's seen better days. Look at that. Anyhow, it's dead. When I plug it in, I get no response, no LED, no nothing. Let's go ahead and flip it over and take the back off and see what's inside. Right off the bat, look what I see. Might be hard to see it on the camera, but these two capacitors are bulged. And they are 330 microfarad 25 volt capacitors. So I think the first step I'm going to do is just go ahead and pull the main board. So the main board looks like it comes out quite easily. I see a screw here, another screw down here. And then there's two screws hiding up underneath here. But I already tried to pull those out. And because there's a terminal on this side and multiple jacks, on the bottom, I'm going to need to pull the complete cover off of this TV to get this chassis to separate right here so that I can move this down or move this side out to lift the main board out. And we can try replacing those capacitors and see if that takes care of it. All right, so I got everything out, but now I got to take all this stuff loose, all the bracket and everything from the back of this. So let's go ahead and put some witness marks on here so we can get it all back together correctly. All right, now we can get down to the meat and potatoes. I've already got that one screw out of there. I tried taking it apart earlier, it just didn't work out. All right, there's the board, little cover. Definitely been running a little bit warm right up in here. Good, and the circuit board is marked correctly with the negative side being up as you see it. All right, let's go ahead and give those guys an ESR check. A little over 20 ohms on one of them, that's bad. And about three and a half ohms on the other one, definitely bad. Excuse me, those are 470s. I thought they were 330s. I just happen to have a set of 470 microfarad at 25 volt Nichicons, much higher quality capacitors. Let's just ESR these as they stand. Just shy of zero, absolutely perfect. Just shy of zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace those two capacitors. We'll go ahead and pull the other four capacitors on this board that are not domed and just ESR those as well. Make sure they're okay. Replace as necessary. So these right here are 100 microfarad, 100 volt, 22 microfarad at 160. All right, first we'll go ahead and check the 22s at 160. This one checks absolutely open. No movement whatsoever. Open again on that one, absolutely open. So here are the 100 at 100. Zero, that's good. And zero, that's good, those are both good. So I need to find a couple of 22 at 160. All right, well I do have a couple of 22s at 250. We're gonna to have to go ahead and use those. Let's go ahead and check them first. Let's go ahead and check lead integrity. And we'll go ahead and zero that back down. I'd like to see about one ohm or less on these. Just under one ohm, that's good. And just under one ohm, perfectly happy with that. So we'll go ahead and put back in the 100s at 100 that both check perfectly fine. We'll throw these new 22s at 250 back in here. And then we'll check all the other capacitors on the board, make sure they're okay. Then we'll give it a go. Okay, once again, I verified lead integrity. I have zero ohms, so that's good. Let's go ahead and start checking these. I've marked them on the board. This is a 470 microfarad. I should see close to zero, and I do. That's fine. This is a 220 microfarad. Good. This is a 100. Good. This is a 4.7. I should see probably anywhere from eight to two ohms and I see 20, I'm gonna to wanna to replace that one. This one is a 47, I should see pretty close to zero, and I see eight ohms, I'm gonna replace that one as well. 
This is the main AC input filter cap. It's only a 100 and I see one and a quarter ohms. I think that's going to be okay. So let's go ahead and change these two. And maybe this 470, because it should be pretty close to zero, especially if my 220 is zero and my 100 is zero. So I think I'll replace the 470, the 4.7, and the 47. Okay, so I have a 470 microfarad at 16 volts, just shy of zero ohms. I have a 4.7 at 50 volts, and it tests about three and a half ohms, and I have a 47 at 50. Now it tests just under zero ohms, so I thought just for the heck of it, I'd go ahead and check this FET that's been running really hot. Source to drain, I get a dead short. 1.4 ohms. And from the gate, I read 137 ohms. And then I thought I would check these two diodes right here. 2 ohms. So, I believe these are in parallel. I'm going to go ahead and pull them out and we'll see how they check. I went ahead and checked these diodes. They check good. Capacitors charging, that's good. That one tests good. So we'll, we'll pull the FET, we'll pull these diodes, and we'll test them. That one tests good. Both of those test good. So I'm going to go ahead and add some flux around this guy to help it help the solder flow better. Next we'll hit it with the hot air station. And crank up the air speed. There it is, off the board. Now let's go ahead and check the pads now that it's off the board. No short. We do not show a short now. Definitely got a short there. Yeah, read the same both ways. Let's go to ohms. 157 ohms. And 1.4 ohms. Well, let's see if I can cross that if I have one in stock. Okay, so the FET that's in there is an AOD4454. And it's a 150 volt 20 amp rated FET. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those. I do, however, have some FQD 19N10s. It's a 100 volt rated 15.6 amp FET. They're both in channel MOSFETs. And those capacitors I changed on the board were 100 volt rated capacitors. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it in there and we'll give it a go, see if that takes care of the problem. All right, so I'm gonna start by adding just a little bit of solder, just to get the pads ready. And especially the main heat sink pad back here. Next, I'm going to add some flux. Next, I'm just going to drop the fat in the approximate location that it's going to live in. Probably going to blow around when I get the hot air on it. That looks good. It took to the board. It's perfectly lined up at this point. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and press down on it. And we'll heat it up a little bit more just to make sure it's got good contact with the heat sink. We saw the solder flow out of the top of it there. We'll let it cool. There, it's cooled off, ready to go. All right, so now if I go ahead and check here where the diodes go, I get a charged capacitor and then 0.437 ohms in the opposite direction. Same thing there. So these two are shorted together. 
these two are shorter, the diodes are in parallel. So let's go ahead and put the diodes back in now. Then we'll finally give it a try. All right, well I have the board mounted back in the chassis. It's reassembled, everything's connected. Let's go ahead and flip it on over and power it up and see what we get. All right, so power's on, let's hit the power button. Probably can't see it, but there's a blue indicator over here on the side. Oh no, and that looks like a bad LCD panel. Oh my goodness, all the work. Yep, look at that, there's a crack in it right there. Doggone it. Well, you can't win them all. Another successful failure. The power supply board has been repaired, but the LCD panel is bad. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video of trying to repair this set. Anyhow, if you could, go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel grow. Remember, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Can't win them all. Bye-bye.